Hi, I'm Tony Bowen and welcome to my Corn Country Rails. Well, this is a kind of exciting video because it brings in conclusion my signaling project. I started signaling the railroad during the pandemic. I had 50 days off from school. My wife and I were doing virtual learning with our students in the mornings and then the afternoons, I had time just to work on the railroad. And I basically got the majority of the upper deck and lower deck signaled. And I've done a couple previous videos on those and I've really enjoyed the signaling system using the Azatrax TS2s and then my signals I got from Custom Signal Systems. Well, the one area that will kind of complete the whole signaling is my hidden staging area. Um, basically the main focus there will be when I have a yard master there, he'll have signals at both ends so that they can basically see if anything is coming before they would want to pull a cut of cars out on the main. Of course, they would still need to get dispatcher's permission before they do that anyway. And so I have two different types of signals I'm putting in. Um, I'm putting in some dwarf signals um, for a couple areas in the staging. And then I'm also putting in my regular, just regular target signals on the mask post. So I'll take you through kind of the process of what I'm doing and hope you will stick around and continue to watch. So currently I have it that trains that are in the train room, they have these two signals here that will indicate anything that is coming out of the staging area. And that's kind of a ways off because following this track all the way down goes right into my staging area. And so I need to have some kind of signal in that staging area that would hopefully alert these signals to either go to a yellow position or a red position if something was coming out onto the main line out of the yard. And so that's one of the reasons that I'm gonna have the dwarf signals um, mounted at the end of the, uh, end of the staging area, just so operators are in the train room. If they come upon the signal, they see it's red, they're like, eh, I better stop right here because there might be a locomotive, a cut of cars in the staging area that are using the main line as kind of a uh, switching lead if they have too long of a train. So in the actual train room, um, I've already done some of the prep work. This is where the dwarf signals will go in. Um, this track here is the main line. This track here in the foreground, it is the switching lead. And so if we were to follow it, that goes into the train room. On the other track that parallels it right here, this is just the switching lead. And for the most part, these little engines will take anywhere from a dozen to 10 cars, and this is enough of a switching lead for them. But every once in a while when they're making up a train and it's a really big train, um, they need to come out on that main line. And so having a set of dwarf signals here will be great because then they will send an indication to that next signal before you come into the train room um, as to what aspect it should be. So if it's a red, obviously the trains out there need to stop because there could be work still going on in here. And so that'll leave the rest of the yard pretty well protected. You know, when somebody's working in the yard and doesn't need to go out on the main line, then they're fine. But if they have that long train and they need to access the main line, that helps them. It's also going to be very good that if somebody's here and needs to go out onto the main line and, you know, they have a dwarf signal that's facing them that's red, obviously that's not a good time to go. Something's coming at them or something is still in the block. Now at the west end of my staging yard, I had to get a little more creative. Um, I have my kind of yard tracks here for engines that aren't being used and dwarf signals would be a little hard to see back there on that main line. So those are gonna be target signals. The one facing them, um, cruise, is obviously gonna be the signal heading west going up the helix. The problem is the signal that will be going east will be facing away from cruise. And so I'm thinking of either facing it outward so people can tell, hey, that eastward signal, that if it's red, something is obviously coming eastbound, may not be at the helix yet, but it's in the block. 
because I just don't like the idea of both signals facing the same direction because I have a feeling sooner or later somebody on my crew is going to misread the wrong signal and we're going to have somewhere between this point and Brooklyn, Iowa a head on. And whether that happens on the helix or somewhere on the backdrop area, I'd rather that not happen. So I'm kind of thinking the one signal that is going west, it'll face the cruise. They'll be able to see it. But the crew that or the signal that's going east, I think I'm going to have it facing outwards towards the aisleway um, and just know that that's the signal that's going to be east. On the upper portion, and please excuse my mess where I have just some of my spare track. I've got the TS2 there that'll get mounted up under here. I've got the sensors already there as I run my hand across so the trains indicate them. But essentially, this is the end of the railroad. And so when you come up in the upper staging, you are either in Silvis, Illinois, or you are leaving Des Moines. And so these signals will be the end. And so they will go through the 30-second cycle of a train will pass by it. That signal will remain red. 30 seconds later, it will go to yellow. And then finally, it'll clear up to green, which is great for people who are in the train room knowing, hey, that train that's left the train room has made it from the lower level, tracks way back there all the way up the helix and have taken and gotten off at this rung of the helix and have made it safely to their track. The same is true as when we have a westbound. If a westbound is ready to leave and it has a red signal that is facing them, obviously it knows, hey, I cannot go down the helix yet until that signal clears up. And at the other end of my staging, I have basically done the same thing, but I got a little creative here since it's just a short distance from leaving the staging area until you re-enter the train room, I move the signals to right here. So I have one signal on this side of the train room. And if you look, you might just see the post of the one that's in the train room. It kind of gives that indication if they can come in. So. Obviously it's a little bit shorter distance. It doesn't have a helix to go down. And so you're rapidly making the compressed distance of leaving Short Line Junction in Des Moines. And in less than four and a half feet, you're already coming out and you're in Grinnell, Iowa. So here's a little look at the signals. Um, first off, I bought this Rail Logic signal tester um, a couple years ago. Um, it's like $15. I think it lists for like $14.98, whatever your shipping is. And so it's nice enough that I can put the 9-volt battery in there. 9-volt battery goes here when you're ready to use it. And then essentially you can hook up your wires, your red, yellow, green, and then common. And then it just has a slider switch for whatever indication you want to use. And so that's really nice to kind of test out those signals before you go to the uh, labor of getting them wired up in that. So here are the dwarf signals, one pair of them from um, Custom Signal Systems. And so I have an eastbound and a westbound signal. And so they already come with the little indication of what wires, what color. So there's red, there's yellow, there's a little bead there for green. And then there's the common with the resistor on it. And then I just added some extra lead on it. So I'm just using solid telephone wire for my lead. And then this end will go into my TS2 board for connecting them up. So I have the first set of dwarf signals ready to go. I made some little styrene temp kind of uh, temporary bases and then running the wire down. I done all my signals with kind of this straw trick where I drill the hole, I put a straw through there, and then I run everything down so it doesn't get hung up on anything. But I looked at the base of the dwarf signals. They're pretty small, and I didn't want to accidentally pull them down through the straw, so that's why I made these little temporary straw, um, or I should say signal bases, 
so they didn't get pulled down through the straw. This whole pink styrofoam was kind of a temporary thing, um, but it's been here for 10 years, but I wouldn't mind pulling it out someday, going with home assault like I have here, and kind of relaying this whole part with home assault, and then the signals would be maybe a little bit more permanently affixed. So basically on my workbench, I'm taking my signals. So here's one of my uh, target signals and the fine wire that comes with it. I am just soldering on the leads that is just using the telephone wire, solid wire to go into my TS2s. So this will just allow it that there's enough room for where I'll be mounted to stretching to where I need it to go into the TS2 board. So at the west end of my staging yard, before it goes up the helix, I have both holes, excuse me, drilled for the signals. So there's one in place, but not hooked up. And then I will uh, feed the other wires for the other signal and get those hooked up. All right, so both signals now are in. The one to the left that is green, that is an eastbound signal that, as I said, I'm either going to have pointed towards the aisleway or have it maybe facing back like that and paint the target a different color because essentially it would be turned the other way, but with the helix and everything, nobody's going to ever see it. The red one, however, that is a true indication that it is red. A train has gone by it and the train is slowly snaking its way up the helix and the next signal it will hit will be in the train room when it restores that signal to a yellow aspect. And then eventually it will go to a clear as soon as it hits the third signal. So the nice thing will be if I have a crew back here, they're switching the yard. And this end of the yard does actually have a longer switch lead. This track right here is a 15 car switch lead. But if it need to go out onto the main, and it saw that that signal on the right that is currently red, if it was green, it basically would have basically clear track for it to use as a switch lead. Problem is I don't like to use that part of the switch lead because you don't go very far and you're gonna hit the bottom rung of the helix and it's gonna go uphill real quick. So instead I'd rather use that other 15 car switch lead that actually goes underneath a loop of the helix and comes out right there and then just kind of deadens. And it's very rarely that I have a train that goes beyond that uh, when we're just switching. A lot of times that's a great place to store already made up train um, if I need to have a free spot in the yard. But currently the yard is pretty open, lots of options. So at this end of the yard, I've got my dwarf signals and so this one that's facing us is displaying a green. And so if we need to go out onto the main, we have a green aspect. The other side right now is currently yellow because of the train that is going up the helix. And now it is time to put in the last set of dwarf signals that come out of the upper staging area. All right, and my last set of dwarf signals are installed up here on the upper staging. So the one over here, which will determine trains that are going down the helix. And then this one obviously will be the coming into the yard and then it will do the 30 second cycle until a train is put away into its track. And then reset back to clear okay the nice thing is the beauty of it is I can still operate continuous loop when I'm down here by myself but for operating sessions this is really the beginning and end of the signaling system and then at the other end of the yard for the upper staging is kind of the same thing that this is the beginning and ending for uh signaling also because then the yards represent 
trains either coming into Silvis, Illinois or Des Moines, Iowa. So, hope you've enjoyed this. I look forward to now having the railroad fully signaled. Can't wait to host my first operating session next fall.